Friday afternoon. Very warm, very hot. But it's summer. It's August in Texas. It's supposed to be. And uh, look how beautiful it is. Look at that sky. Look at that blue. Yeah. You think that nobody created that? You think it just came here on its own? I don't even know how to... I don't know any, any other re reaction than to laugh. That was created. Look at that blue sky. Look at that green grass. I mean, if you're gonna carpet the earth and put a dome over it, who would come up with something better than what God did? I was listening to Pastor Carter today. I hate that noise. Uh, during my walk, I've already done a workout, 1,100 calories, an hour and 20 minutes. I did the yard. I walked two miles. And incredibly blessed that I am, I got a text asking if I wanted to hit at McKinney at 3.30. It's 2.57, it takes about 25 minutes to get there. Beautiful courts of McKinney. So it's again, like last week, it's Friday tennis. Pre-Sabbath tennis. That's... Uh, it's becoming my favorite part, other than the Sabbath itself. Favorite part of the week. And... Uh, it's a good way to end the week. But I was listening to Pastor Carr today and he has a sermon about the Sabbath. It was in the early 2000s. It was in Arcadia. And I think it was when we had had the girls and we had to stay home because of Jessica. Many Sabbaths. Carla would go to the hospital and I'd stay home with Ashley. So we missed, we missed a lot of 2001, I think it was. So I think that's when the sermon was preached because he mentions George Bush. But he's talking about the law of God, the Ten Commandments, and the Sabbath day. I think it's the title of the sermon is A Day to Remember. And uh, he, he said something that really st struck with me as, he's, as he was enumerating the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not take the Lord thy God's name in vain. That's the third commandment. And he said, there's not a worse sin than that. And that struck home with me because taking the Lord's name in vain is not just cursing. That's why I don't watch movies in Hollywood. I'm not gonna pay money. I'm not gonna support their blasphemy. And if you're watching movies, if you claim to be a Christian, especially an Adventist Christian with the end time message that we have, that God is calling his people to holiness, to stand before him, to be translated. Your parents didn't allow you to go to movies like that. My parents didn't. But we've become so lax, so liberal now. Hey, it's just... And I uh, I was watching, I came across something on Facebook. It was at Grand Theft Auto, and it was a skeleton running around the streets of L.A., punching everybody. And I thought it was kind of funny. Then I heard a, a, a someone in the background take the Lord's name in vain. And that was it. I turned it off, and I'll never turn it on again. People say, ah, you're, you're religious, you're a legalist. Yeah, well, if you, if, you, if you think obeying God to the best of your ability is religious, Legalists, then uh, so be it. But it's also when you claim to be a Christian and you live a different lifestyle in secret, or, or when it's convenient, you become a Christian. And uh, 
that's that's some people I know who live really ungodly lives until something happens to them then they become the, the most sincere they, they can and I don't know how they can just put everything they've done in a in a they, they, they say hey good Jesus is good he forgives me well yeah but you can't you can't do what you do to people without <laughs> the, the blood of Christ isn't going to cover unless you go and apologize and make good Jesus said you know go before you even come to him he says it go go straighten it out with with your human then we'll talk about it I forgot what text it's in it might be Luke and so you're just fooling yourself you're not fooling God and um, you're deluded but that's just the way sort of the shallow superficial Christianity of today is I guess but thankfully I'm going to play tennis with uh, Robert and he hits the ball so consistent that the workout I'm about to get in an hour and a half in this 100 degree weather, it's going to be so trying. And yet, it's something that I love. I, I was telling a guy at the gym today, Larry, he thinks I'm crazy to be out there in this heat. I said, Larry, we live for it. And he just kind of laughed and said, have fun. <laughs> I get it. It's hot. But you know what? It keeps you young. It keeps you young at heart. And it keeps you healthy. Water. I've got a full tank of cold water. And it's Friday. And all my bills are paid. My tithe and offerings are, are paid. My heart rate this morning was 41 trying to get in the 30s again if I can it's gonna take some work but uh, health is wealth Jesus is wealth but health is very important gives you a clear mind your good diet a good balanced diet a Bible diet Sabbath rests prayer, meditation, productive, I did the yard today, and that was hot, 102, and then I jumped in the pool, I'm still wet from the pool, but I figured why dry off, I'm going to sweat in a minute anyway, look how pretty it is, look at that, that's the Warren Buffett's Grandscape, Warren Buffett owns that right there, his company. Nebraska Furniture Mart and their whole development. They got a big Ferris wheel there. I don't know if you can see it or not. I don't know what that's about. I think it's tall. So I hope you have a good Sabbath. I hope you you remember the Sabbath. Carter said said the desecration of the Sabbath is the root cause of societal ills. I agree with that hundred percent. We're openly desecrating the Sabbath. We're openly defying God's Ten Commandments. And uh, that's why you have crime and family uh, and drugs, family problems, divorces, drugs, homeless, violent crime. Our society is crumbling. Because man, the holy day became man's day. But we know better, right? Oh, we know better than God. Why, why have a holy day each week when we can uh, we can have every day the same? Oh yeah, that sounds good. Who needs a who needs? A, but Carter said, if if we don't come apart, we'll come apart. And I had to think about that. I know what he means. 
take the Sabbath to come apart from the world. Otherwise, you're going to come apart in your uh, life. You become unraveled. People are on the edge. They're unhappy. Find a person that uh, goes to church, reads his Bible, can't wait for Jesus to come, observes the Sabbath because Jesus said to, because they love Jesus, they want to spend that time with Jesus. You're going to find a person that has a peace that you know not of. You don't even know about it because you're not spiritual. So, uh, that's that's what I have, anyway. I don't care what anybody thinks. I, I have the Bible. I have the Word of God to back up all of my positions. I know it pretty good. I read it a lot, study it. And uh, I don't get emotion, emotional. The one person that I know, she went to high school, she gets emotional. She gets angry. Foul mouth, vulgar mouth, ugly mouth, cursing, cussing, claims to be a Christian. See? No, she's 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 all feelings and emotion. It's the last thing you want. That's how you end up ugly. I got the word of God. I got I got I got scripture. It tells me how to behave. So, uh, we look forward to Sabbath tonight. I'm going to go hit, I'm going to film it. I got a camera going today. And we'll see what that's about. Look how beautiful it is. I'll be in California in a couple weeks. And the freeways are all dirty and full of litter. And all dead uh, vegetation or, or, you know, around it. Look how green it is here. And clean. Oh, God bless. I am, I'm going to get ready to play. Thanks.